Hey guys, JWar here with another video. Today we're going to look at the Bone Shatter Berserker build we did. So uh, we're going to take a deep dive, talk about all the gear, talk about all the choices we made on the build, a little bit of ways to improve it, and good news, I made a budget version of the build as well for you guys that are looking for the not crazy 300 exalt omniscience headhunter build. Um, and the other thing is, if you want to play a good build and you're trying to farm currency, uh, you can play that build, right? Throw it together. I think it's about 20 to 30x, so it's not the cheapest thing, but we're kind of end of league now. If you can't throw together 20 and 30x, um, come talk to me, actually, because you're probably doing some things wrong, and we can get you that amount of currency pretty quickly if you just change a couple things. We're going to start out with the build showcase, killing all the bosses and stuff, and yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it.
Alright guys, let's take a little bit of a look at the gear here for our Bone Shatter Berserker, right? So first thing, most important thing on any attack build is going to be the weapon. you got to have a big weapon damage, which is going to scale. Um, if you guys didn't know, attack builds scale a lot off of weapon damage. Spell builds are going to scale off of spell skill damage. That's why you want plus skill gems to raise up the base damage. Interesting thing to note while we're on this topic is Bone Shatter has this flat added physical attack damage. Uh line there on the gem and it kind of scales with um with gem levels almost like a spell skill would so um having uh this brass dome was really good uh, if you can get a corrupted brass dome or double corrupted brass dome with some plus levels to skill gems either duration or aoe because bone shatter has both of those gem tags on it you're gonna have a really nice increase your damage like i said i got kind of lucky with this brass dome very nice brass dome there um, okay, but anyway, back to the axe, we just have a, this was probably crafted, I just bought this one for 25 exalts, uh, a little bit expensive, right? But, um, one important thing to have is that tier 1 crit chance. You could get the Ashling crit chance, the crafted veiled mod, or you could craft it on yourself and get a lower percent increased crit chance and more, uh, omniscience attributes because it's going to be like uh, dex and intelligence right could be nice could go with that you have a little bit less base crit chance which could uh, keep you from hitting a uh, hundred percent crit chance you gotta be a little bit careful with that uh, i just go with the tier one here i could ashling this to get something better but i'm i'm happy with this right now so tier two attack speed and then tier one tier one tier two prefixes so really good a really good axe here isn't too hard to hit with combinators um Next league, how you would go about hitting this without recombinators is you'd probably just get a fractured merciless uh, tier one, right? And then you'd uh, just essence spam tier two ish flat until you hit the dictators and then you do the suffixes so it wouldn't be too hard it's probably just gonna be more expensive next league but hopefully uh attack builds and axes stay cheap for us so we can play this next league because uh, it's been a lot of fun i'm probably gonna want to play it again so Moving on, the rings. This ring is really nice. We're really just looking for triple attribute suffixes on a amethyst ring because we need a little more chaos res. Uh, this one hit some really nice rolls on the prefixes. Fizz damage to attacks with the life roll. Tier 2 was really nice. And then an open prefix for our non-channeling skills. Really nice there. My other ring isn't nearly as nice. It's got the prefix or the suffixes pretty good. I've been doing reforge keep suffixes to try to hit something better. Hit maybe a nice life roll with an open prefix and then maybe something else good. Maybe another fizz damage to attack. Maybe some cold damage attacks would be nice too, but uh, haven't anything good yet. I might just leave this one the way it is. I don't know if I'm finished crafting it this league or not, but um, those are kind of the, the rings you want here on this build, and that's what I have. Okay, let's talk about the gloves. The gloves are really important here. So, what I've done on this build, and you can see I've got another pair of gloves down here because these are the new ones I'm working on. So I kind of figured out something. When I first crafted these gloves, I made, uh, well, first I made two mistakes. I crafted them on a, only an armor base, um, which I should have used for an armor evasion base. I don't know why I did that. I just wasn't thinking or something. They're still really nice gloves, though. But um, mainly, let's talk about the accuracy rating first before I get into this press. Um, they're kind of tied in here with what I'm about to talk about. So uh, I need the accuracy rating to get to 100% crit chance, right? But... Um, I didn't have my belt enchanted, and I remembered about this accuracy rating with Onslaught enchant, and on this build, you can see we have permanent Onslaught, thanks to our Cluster Jewel, right? Because the cooldown for General's Cry is less than the duration of Onslaught, right? So we have permanent Onslaught, it never goes away. So, we can basically take this into account as an additional stat there, the enchant, that we're going to have more accuracy, and if we take this off, you can see, with our Onslaught buff up, we're going to have a 100% chance to hit. It goes away, we're only 97%, so this buff here allows us to not need accuracy on the gloves right so that allowed me to use these gloves and then craft suppress on them which i got a fractured attribute uh tier one attribute gloves uh hydra scale gauntlets which are pretty good and uh, i'm in the process of crafting these they're still not done i'd like to get them close to this one these are really nice they hit a nice ashling and then i'm crafting plus two melee strike hopefully these will hit something like that we'll see this allows us to get a hundred percent spell suppress chance and i'll show you how we do that right so we take this mastery here and why we want evasion based gloves is because uh, we use this mastery where 10% chances for a spell damage if your boots, helmet, and gloves have evasion. So boots, evasion, helmet, evasion, and gloves with evasion. You can craft evasion on these actually, but you lose the strike range, which I didn't want to do. And we're kind of min maxing here, so I'm just going all out on getting a really good pair of gloves, right? You don't, absolutely don't have to do this. Worst case scenario, you just replace that plus two melee strike range craft with evasion craft, and you're actually good to go. But we're going all out, so. 
that's what you would want to do if you're min-maxing this build, and then you would want to suppress instead of the accuracy reading, right? Which is another thing, I didn't want to recraft the stuff so it's on these, just to fix that. So we started with a new base. Anyway, um, if you get all this, and you have tier 1 suppressed on your shield, and you have, um, I think it's all you need, actually. Oh, and then this is tier 2 suppress on the boots. You can get tier 1, and you wouldn't need this, but um, wait, since now we're at 98%. And part of that is because we have plus 2% here on the Glorious Vanity. If we had a little bit better Glorious Vanity with another 2% on one of these small nodes, which you can get pretty easily. Um, not this late in the league. It's kind of hard to get a, a find a good Glorious Vanity this late in the league. Or you get, uh, sometimes they have 6% here on this one, which would put us over cap too. So those are kind of the last little things I'm working on to min-max the build to have 100% spell suppress cap. Uh, right now we're still using these gloves, but honestly, I haven't really had too much trouble with... Uh, not having cap spell suppress, it still does uh, wave 30 simulacrums deathless almost every time. Uh, yeah, don't have a problem. It's not able to not complete a wave 30 simulacrum like at all. Not even close to being able to not do it or anything. Anyway, and then moving on here. So I kind of showed over the uh, gloves. The gloves, helmet, the boots, and even the shield are kind of all crafted the same way. The shield, you kind of want the double fracture, which is going to be difficult to get next league. So you might have to, I don't know, take a hit on one of the mods. Um, somewhere on the shield because you can't eldritch craft the shield like you can with the glove helmet and boots basically you want to essence spam until you get the suffixes you want on each one of these and then you eldritch craft till the prefixes usually involves just throwing a uh ember on it an eldritch ember right so that eldritch exarch is dominant so to speak for the eldritch crafting and then you just chaos spam until you get like tier one life and then you finish with like a craft or an ashling if you really want to go hard ashling it until you get another really good mod and then finish with the craft something like that that's how you make these um they probably go for about 10 20x each for all the essence spamming and then the eldritch crafting you have to do depending on how far you want to go with it right and then you can do ashlings if you really want to go far with it or just stop there you're going to end up with pretty pretty good ones either way but the more important part is getting the suffixes correct because that's really where a lot of the power from the item is coming from the uh the prefixes are more just like life roll increased armor and evasion and then maybe a nice crafted bot it's not terribly important to get really really good prefixes i think that goes over just about all the gear obviously then we're using uh bottled faith uh one more thing to talk about maybe is um Diamond Flask is kind of important for our crit chance. We need a little bit more crit chance here to get capped on crit. So use the Diamond Flask. Uh, reduced effect of curses is what I went with. Uh, shock immunity because we're not ailment immune. So I mean, it wouldn't be immune to shock. Ignite isn't too big of a problem. And then we are chill uh, immune and freeze immune from our Pantheon and the boots. So we're good there on that. And then uh, it's pretty hard to get Chaos Res capped on this. So I used an Amethyst Flask here. You could use Net Series Promise for a little bit more damage, but I rather wanted the um, quality of life with the charges gained when hit to kind of have the constant flask uptime, even on bosses and stuff, rather than using an Net Series Promise where you wouldn't have that utility from the utility flask. And then also getting a little bit more increased armor because we are bone shatter and when your stacks get up, you kind of want as much physical damage mitigation as you can get. Um, so yeah, and then we also have some, just, I'm not going to talk about them too long, because it's getting kind of a long video here, but we have some, uh, pretty useful, um, well, the helm, I guess I'll talk about for a second, it's kind of important. The increased effect of non-damaging elements is going to increase our brittle effect, allowing us to get our crit hits to 100%, that one's pretty important, and then the other one's really just, um, a nice thing to have, uh, fizz damage recouped as life, we're constantly hitting ourselves with fizz damage from bone shatter trauma stacks, so that's just kind of a good one to get. There wasn't a whole lot of other better options for the second implicit there with the Eldritch Crafting. And then physical damage converted to cold, uh, we need that in combination with 40% from our Watcher's Eye, 40% from our Cold Mastery on the tree, and then 20% uh, here. You can do some things, which I'm probably going to try to do with gloves, to where you can change that implicit to something else. Or actually, actually, what you'd more likely do is uh, craft, get the Veiled Ashling here on the gloves for the other prefix, and you get 35% cold damage, which then you'd only need another 5% on the implicit here. Um, to 25%, which you could definitely do. Uh, while keeping the two additional strikes and then you can get an even better watcher's eye with more damage or something Just really min maxing it there. You could go that I might go that route before the end of the league I don't know if I have time to play around with it, but it would be cool to do to min max it a little bit harder so That's basically all the gear here. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the tree too much We're just basically taking a uh, one axe cluster here with crit multi and 40 crit multi Which is huge and accuracy rating, which is really nice for us. Um 
calling strike against marked enemies. We're taking this cluster for omniscience, taking this cluster for spell suppress. Um, we have Immortal Ambition from our Glorious Vendi here. We use Vol Pact, which makes us no very, very leech based on this build, which I've probably talked about a little bit already. And then just some Fortify cluster, um, Call to Arms for a General's Cry, and not too much else. This is really important to take for clear. Strike skills can target additional enemies from farther away. Very important to have that. And everything else is, uh, yeah, pretty pretty basic, right? Uh, we got an, immortal, uh, or an impossible escape here with Panopticon, really the biggest one. And then these are pretty nice to have as well. 40% uh, increased damage there and another... 10% uh, increased attack speed and 24% increased damage there. The attack speed really being the nice one on that note. Um, and then just some cluster tools. So yeah, and then crit multi here, I guess. The other thing to mention, I think we covered pretty much everything else. Uh, pen here, which is really nice. And there's our cold conversion, right? And here's the Watcher's Eye, which uh, I had the vitality on hit. Um, or the life gain on hit with vitality, which we just throw in a level 1 uh vitality gem for this somewhere in here and then yeah we just get the benefit of that we don't really get any benefit from having vitality because we are vol packed so okay i could probably talk about this build a lot more because i'm having a lot of fun with it but i don't want to make video last too too long but yeah that's a little bit of a rundown of the gear there for our uh our bone shatter boy here okay guys so i made a little bit of a budget version here of the build for people that may be interested in playing a Boom Shatter Berserker, but they don't have, I don't know, 200 exalts plus or whatever it costs to put uh, put the other version together. This Flesh River looks like it's really, uh, really expensive. 850 DPS two-hander. It's not that bad, really. If you go into this, I kind of I kind of did it like this on purpose. This has, it has high flat, right? Which you should be able to get something close to this which it's in the tier two range, which is gonna be in the uh, essence range of being able to hit it with essences, right? And what you should be able to do, and why I have the, the tier set up like this, is you should be able to hit it with essences until you get a decent fizz roll on hybrid, hybrid fizz, right? And then what you wanna do is you wanna set this up with an open prefix, and then you're gonna craft the uh, up to 129, I think it is, uh, crafted fizz damage right on that open prefix so this will be you'll roll this with essences until you get these two this one's guaranteed with essence right the flat fizz and then this one is you want to hit a high accuracy uh rating slash percent hybrid and then you want to just craft on this fizz roll right so it should be hard to get that um obviously it might be kind of tough to hit a pretty decent attack speed roll but um the prefixes should be pretty cheap the expensive part, if you want to get the attack speed and get, which is really going to scale your DPS, obviously, you know, we lose, uh, you can lose or gain a lot with more or less attack speed. I think if you get around tier three, probably pretty fine, right? That's why I put this one at. So you have like a, what, I think it's usually a one and nine. So how many tiers are there? There's eight, one and eight, right? So to hit a tier three, uh, they're all equally weighted, right? So if you reforge, uh, you put a keep prefixes, prefixes cannot be changed metacraft on this it's 2x per attempt once you get the prefix is good you reforge speed with harvest after you put the reforge pre or prefixes cannot be changed craft on it and then you should hit a pretty good attack speed tier um pretty quickly right and maybe hit another cool mod like i don't know man you're really lucky you crit multi and that's gonna up your damage quite a bit right you can find a good one for cheap go for it i like flesh rippers you don't have to go with flesh rippers the base crit chance is going to help overall in getting your crit chance to 100 percent but so that's how you make the weapon, which, as I was saying, they go for about 20 exalts if you buy them, but they definitely don't cost that much to make. You could make them probably for five exalts, uh, which is kind of expensive, but it's probably more one of the more expensive pieces in, in this gear here um, that you would have to do to get this working. Um, the other thing, I don't think the Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame combo for Rite of Ruin was pretty cheap when I got it. Uh, let's just check on the price here. Let me take a look at this and uh, maybe I'll cut the video. Uh, for the Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame combo, uh, looking about 1, 2, 3x for both of them. So not too bad there, but that's some, some of the more expensive. Ones. Glorious Vanity, uh, I have a good one here. You don't need a good one. You just really need Ahuana right here so you get your immortal ambition that's all you need on the glorious vanity um continue on uh really just everything else is just basic life and rest stuff oh the one the one thing you will need um uh, just regular brass dome make sure you get plus five to all maximum elemental resistances on the roll that's about all you want there uh good armor helps too like, uh, you want to get like four thousand plus armor on your brass dome and then uh what else are we doing let me sit up my chair here um 
bottled faith. Uh, obviously not having it, you can take a little bit of hit on the damage, but not the worst thing in the world. You can replace it with another sulfur flask and still have pretty good increased damage there. Impossible escape, this one's actually pretty cheap. We get the one down here. Your cluster jewels might be a little expensive, maybe like an exalt each for the for the large cluster jewel eight passives with these modifiers, but not too bad. Uh, you're gonna want an interrogation. And then this Enduring Composure 2 uh, two passive, probably not that bad either, probably like less than an exalt for that. And um, that's really kind of all the big items here. Uh, the Gauntlets, these might be a little tricky. So what I did was I dropped the Watcher's Eye, which this means you either have to get Veiled, Fizz Damage Converted to Chaos, or Temple Mod Fizz Damage Converted to Chaos. Which you need to get the number on these gloves, needs to add up to about, uh, what is it, 40%. No, it needs to add up to north of, um, let's see, we're getting 40 on the tree, so we need 60. You need 60 on the gloves, which you could actually get, and I need to fix here. Let's uh, let's fix this real quick. You'd have to roll this one a little bit higher, which you can do. You roll this one up to 25%, and then you get 35% either with an unveil, which I would just buy gloves. You just buy gloves like this with the mod on it already. It's 30 to 35% fizz converted to chaos, which you can get with uh, either temple, I believe, or... Um, Actually, I think Temple's only 25, so you want uh, the Veiled Fizz converted to Cold. Just on any rare gloves, you're going to have to spend some money to get the Strike Skills to two additional nearby enemies with some Orb of Conflict crafting. If you have any questions about that, just uh, contact me on Discord or something. I could show you how to do it for pretty cheap, probably like uh, my college check couple of results to get the two additional nearby enemies craft. Worst case scenario, you just go for one, which you could just spam some uh, Ichors or uh, Embers, Eldritch Currency on it to get one additional target. So not too bad there, and then it's just got some basic uh, other rolls on it. Hopefully get some good other mods. If you can't get those other mods, you're just going to have a little bit less life. No big deal, really. Uh, you could also go with this. Oh, man, the, the pen is huge. Holy crap. Yeah, get the pen. Yeah, get this one. So get Forces of Nature on your anointment. That's going to give us way more damage, actually, which is kind of exciting because um, 20 million, um, it doesn't feel like Lightning Strike 20 million because uh, you don't get the double hit. So... You know, if you're used to playing Lightning Strike Berserker, it's not going to feel like 20 million Lightning Strike damage. It's going to feel like 10 million Lightning Strike damage. But we're getting up to 26, almost 30 million here with that anointment. The rings, nothing special here. A little bit of fizz damage to attacks if you get a higher roll. That great. Um, a lot of resistance, but, uh, you know, just try to get pretty good rings. I only run with one non-channeling skills. Have a minus mana cost. If you get it on both, that's great. You probably don't really need it. And for the belts, uh, obviously not going to use a Headhunter on the budget version. We've got... a uh, Arn's Anguish, which allows us to scale the damage a little bit better. Uh, the first thing I'd probably get on this build is a Headhunter, though. As, as you can see here, we're losing about 20% of the damage without uh, Arn's Anguish. Uh, it's just going to convert our Endurance Charges to give us triple damage, rather. Uh, that's what the Brutal Charges instead of Endurance Charges does with the belt. And you get some nice life and some fire res on the belt. It's a pretty good belt, especially for something like this build, which uh, I don't use Endurance Charges on the other version, so you don't really need them for uh, physical damage mitigation. As you can tell, like, uh, you know, it's not really changing our physical damage mitigation to have or not have Endurance Charges, even with us dealing a lot of physical damage to ourselves with Bone Shatter, because I do not use these on the higher end version and I'm just fine, right? So not having Endurance Chargers versus having Endurance Chargers doesn't really matter, really just doing it for the damage here with Arn's Anguish. Okay, Bottle of Faith, you lose some damage there without Bottle of Faith. Obviously it's a good thing. I think they're pretty cheap though now at this point in the league, so you shouldn't have too much trouble picking that up. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all the gear there. Uh, the jewels aren't too bad. You might spend probably a total of 5x on all the jewels, clusters, and uh, Glorious Vanity, Timeless, uh, or Impossible Escape, and the Flame Flesh combo. All of it included, maybe 5, 6x, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. I doubt it's going to be too much more expensive than that though. And the weapon... Uh, Probably cost 5x to craft, maybe. And then everything else should be pretty cheap. Arn's Anguish could be really cheap. Bottle Faith, maybe spend 2 or 3x on that. Um, the boots, or really the gloves might be the only other expensive thing. This cooldown recovery is important to get, but not necessarily a mandatory to get it that high. As, long, as well as the Chaos Res, you don't need it that high. Those are really high rolls for the Eldritch Currency. So you don't need the stuff that high. But yeah, everything else is just life and res on all this other stuff. So yeah, you should be able to get to 26 mil. Uh, which is a decent weapon and some uh, moderate moderate cost in jewels and then you can play this for a while and this is going to be a good enough build to farm uh, you know your headhunter with if you're trying to get a headhunter you can play this version of it farm for a while you could probably do simulacrums on this for a currency although simulacrums aren't the best currency maker this late in the league uh, they're really good and the builds are really good at doing simulacrums I don't think you'll be able to do wave 30 on this build uh, especially without headhunter 
but you can push at least wave 25, I'm sure, consistently, and that's really all you need to do with simulacrums being as cheap as they are. So, uh, another note is make sure you get, uh, or try to get, a helmet. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's Nightmare Bassinet, we're not taking advantage of the reason. Usually you want to have evasion on helm, boots, and gloves here is you want to have like an armor evasion base you usually just want armor on this build evasion is kind of nice to have but uh you know we don't end up with a lot of it usually so it's kind of just like a little bonus doesn't really do much for us though but usually i would take these notes and we get the mastery here which is 10 percent chance 10 percent more spells press chance if our gloves helmet and boots have evasion rating right so that's why i use hybrid but you don't have to on this version so really just grab any base that looks decent maybe an armor base maybe an armor evasion base that's got a berserk buff effect that might cost one x for the base and then um again you can roll uh some different stuff on this let me see what my helmet had on it here uh yeah increased effect of non-damaging elements you want that and then fizz damage recouped as life is nice because we're constantly hitting ourselves with fizz damage from bone shatter so you'll get the constant kind of recoup the life back right so yeah there you go and the build should feel pretty good to play um obviously you're gonna lose like the strike range that i have on the helmet if you notice that but that doesn't really matter because you're gonna gain strike range with a two-hander if you're using a two-hander over a one-hander you get plus two range there right weapon range 11 weapon range 13 here so and honestly i played with less strike range and it doesn't really matter too much so that is the budget version of this build and i'll link this in the pob as well just to show you guys that are maybe really want to play this build um it's obviously not gonna be as good in this format but if you really want to play bone shatter berserker and you like the video maybe you just uh you know don't have the currency to throw the end game version together or well this is the end game version as well it's just not super min maxed end game omniscience build right um anyway if you don't have the currency to get omniscience and headhunter and everything else that's on that version um you could do this with uh, life and res instead of attribute stacking for omniscience and it gets pretty good pretty good i mean that's that's almost close to half the damage of the other one and that's that's pretty respectable right the other one's doing about 60 70 mil this one's doing about 26 and i usually have the other one at higher stacks right so it's really doing about 30 if you're in simulacrums and you're constantly hitting mapping, you're probably really going to be closer around 10 stacks. It's a little bit harder to keep the stack count high when you don't have a constant flow of monsters to hit, right? But um, not a huge difference. They're really like 4 million damage. But we've got it to the point where we're stacking, or we're, we're scaling it to the tens of billions of damage anyway. So it's going to be pretty good against pretty much all content. Um, again, the only thing I probably wouldn't do on this is just like, boss farming because it's just not that good at farming bosses it could do it but it's just going to probably die a lot in the phasing where you don't have anything to hit and you have to avoid damage or you're standing on degens because again you don't really have life regen unless you're hitting something right because we're uh, we're uh, what's this thing called again vol packed with just tons of life leech so we're basically immortal when we're hitting stuff but when we're not hitting stuff we're a little susceptible to die so that's just the the way the build is built Anyway, guys, so that's the budget version of the build, this build for you guys looking to play it. I'll post the POP for the budget version in the description. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Hope you liked it. Um, we're going to have more 319 builds coming up. I'm going to be testing a lot of stuff, be trying to get some cool League Starter ideas together. I'm definitely going to have some content coming out covering League Starters. Even if I don't get my own builds together, uh, I'll recommend a lot of good ones that other content creators have done. Uh, hopefully, we don't have to do that for every build. Hopefully, I'm come with some cool builds. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that to the channel. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.